Tomo News presents Sucky Soccer and Footy Fails. Pull shot intern with rifle at practice. Chelsea defender Ashley Cole is in strife after bringing a .22 caliber air rifle to the club's training ground. Cole was clowning around with a rifle and accidentally shot 21-year-old student intern Tom Cohen. Cohen was treated by on-site staff and given two days of sick leave. However, Cohen wasn't sent to hospital, nor were police called, suggesting Chelsea wished to keep the incident quiet. Cohen's father complained after his son's wound reopened two days later. Chelsea have now fined Cole, and police are investigating the incident. Hoop sticks in Das Boot ahead of Sarez's latest dive. Liverpool forward Luis Suarez has gained a reputation as one of the Premier League's most prolific divers. His theatrics reached a new low over the weekend against Stoke. When his triple salco caused Stoke's Tony Pulez to call for a three-match ban for divers. Now, whenever Salas is actually fouled, no one believes him. Such as when Stokes Robert Hoof stamped on him earlier in the match. Maybe Suarez needs to change his training regime. Should there be a three-match ban for a simulation? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Ashley Young is a diving winker. <laughs> Manchester United winger Ashley Young is at the center of a cheating storm after winning a second penalty in a week with another outrageous dive. Young's so good that many fans are wondering if he actually practices his diving. Even his United boss, Sir Alex Ferguson, said he is worried Young may get a reputation as a diver. But Ferguson won't worry too much. As long as Young's repeated conning of referees helps United retain the Premier League title. Young is no stranger to controversy. In 2007, the News of the World reported Young liked performing naked for women on live webcam streams. Many in England blame the diving culture on the influx of continental players. <laughs> Since the inception of the Premier League, but it's not all bad. With Young on the national side, England might be able to compete again on the world stage. Do you think Young and Football's other professional divers should be punished? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I bang Cristiano Ronaldo, claims busty Playboy Bunny. Chilean Playboy Bunny, Daniela Chavez, has claimed that she had an affair with soccer superstar Cristiano Ronaldo. She told Reforma magazine that the two met in the US in late 2014, while Ronaldo was dating his ex, Irina Sheik, a Russian supermodel. According to the Daily Mail, Chavez was named as Playboy Mexico's Christmas model of the month in 2014. The beauty also made headlines earlier this year when she reportedly said she had a freeway as a way of giving an ex-boyfriend a birthday present. Ronaldo has yet to comment on the claims. Soccer players in Bangkok, Hukuroji disgraces English Premier League's Leicester City FC. Leaked video of a debauched, racist, six-way Bangkok hukuroji involving three junior players for Leicester City FC has forced groveling apologies from the men involved and, we're sure, some awkward conversations between the club's management and its billionaire Thai owners. James Pearson, Tom Hopper and Adam Smith were in Bangkok on an end-of-season tour to promote the club in Thailand. And they couldn't possibly have screwed it up more when they decided to pick up a trio of sex workers and then screw them while calling them slit eyes and filming it all. We can only imagine the conversation manager Nigel Pearson would have had with his bosses 
the billionaire Vichai Sitwanaprapa and his son when he explained to them that his own kid and his buddies had filmed an orgy and racially insulted their Thai sisters. We hope Vichai, a polo mad sportsman himself, not only fires the three idiots, but teaches them a lesson they'll never forget. Peruvian soccer player survives getting struck by lightning. Watch this. And now a closer look. Who would have thought that this Peruvian soccer player, Joao Contreras, who had been reported dead by the media, is now safe and sound? The 21-year-old player for Team Sport Aguila was on the field during a Copa Peru semifinal match against Fuerza Minor last Tuesday. Contreras said a doctor later told him the lightning slashed through his face, going down his right side to his chest and stomach before exploding at his right ankle. Play was halted because several other players were also affected. Contreras woke up in the hospital and realized his jersey was torn up and both of his legs were numb. According to Contreras, quote, At that moment, I was dead. Did not feel my legs. It was something inexplicable. I had the fright of my life. Right now, I feel like I've been reborn. Indian soccer player dies after failed goal celebration. A 23-year-old Indian soccer player is dead after a goal celebration failed spectacularly. It happened as he attempted a somersault and ended up breaking his back. Last week during a Mizoram Football Association match, the player knocked in a rebound after a free kick had bounced off the left goal post. That's when he attempted the Mirasov closer flip by first going into a front handspring, which he pulled off. But when he tried to do the backward somersault, he landed on his face, which ended up breaking his back. He was surrounded immediately by teammates who called for medical staff. The player died Sunday, five days after suffering the injury to his spinal cord. Despite playing on after his horrific injury last week, his club announced on Sunday that they would retire his number 21 jersey. Euro 2012 fight, Russia-Poland fans battle in Warsaw. As expected, Russian hooligans have spoiled the Euro 2012, behaving in a manner to which they're historically accustomed. UEFA didn't help matters much. Organizers scheduled a match between bitter rivals Russia and Poland on Russia's national day. Even the tournament's so far useless psychic animals could have predicted how that would have played out. Russia is strenuously denying its fans talk to players with racist chants. Many think it's time to send the Russian hooligans hacking, along with the Greeks, who also seem destined for an early exit from another Euro. Should Russia be kicked out if the fans cause more trouble? Leave a comment below. Russian footballer encouraged to kick more balls by porn star. A Russian footballer has just received some added motivation to get out there and kick balls. Thanks to a triple X inducement from fellow Russian porn star Alina Yeramenko, aka Alina Hennessy. 24 year old Alexander Kokorin plays forward for Dynamo Moscow, which is presently struggling to qualify for the Europa League. So, in a recent interview with a Russian sports mag, Hennessy said if he scores five more goals in the next 10 games, she'll deliver a 16 hour pelvic thrust buffet with extra nasty sauce on the side. Sure, a millionaire international football star probably has his pick of Kegel practicing top tier Euro skanks to choose from. But how many of them won best sex scene in a foreign production at the 2015 AVN Awards? So get out there, Alexander, and make your motherland proud. Just don't trip over your laces before you make it to bed. Semi-pro striker Jay Hart stricken from team for sex and dugout. Footballer Jay Hart may have taken his club's attempts to reach out to women a bit too literally. Clitheroe striker Jay Hart's team was getting a bloody awful thrashing on the last day of the season, a day the club had designated as Ladies' Day to try to attract more female fans. It seemed to have worked for at least one female supporter, who let Jay slip one through her defenses in the pitch side dugout, no less. High five! But of course, when you have a bit of a crumpet in public, there's a decent chance someone's gonna see you and film your spectacular finish.
Minutes after the cell phone video started making the rounds, Jay's career was screwed. This father of two apologized, saying he'd had a few drinks, but a bit of lust and thrust in the dugout is not how you score with management. Iran's female soccer team may have a few too many balls on the field. Iran's national soccer team has been accused of using players who are not fully women. According to Saudi owned news outlet Al Arabiya, as many as eight of their players have yet to undergo a sex change operation. Yet they're playing as females. The International Olympic Committee allows transsexual athletes to compete in their respective categories as long as they've completed sexual reassignment surgery, undergone two years of hormonal therapy, and are legally recognized as said gender. Believe it or not, sex change operations are legal in Iran. Pretty surprising for a culture that values segregation of sexes and punishes homosexuality with death. By the way, this wouldn't be the first time Iran's been busted for tucking back an eggplant or two on the soccer field. So if Iran can't play by the international rules and regulations on the soccer field, can we trust them to uphold other international standards and agreements? where not calling their bluff could lead to apocalyptic consequences. Goal or no goal? Referee awards penalty after keeper saves it. Soccer, or football as it's known locally, is a big deal in Scotland, especially for teenagers. Last week, two local under-14 teams were playing a cup final in Edinburgh, and after 90 minutes and extra time, no team was winning. The game went to a penalty shootout, and this happened. You'll notice that the goalkeeper initially saves the penalty, but then drops the ball before it rolls back into the net. The referee then awards a goal to the other team. The penalty takers team went on to win the cup, but there's been a lot of debate over whether the referee should have allowed the penalty to stand. So what do you think? Goal or no goal? Let us know in the comments below. An amateur soccer match in northern Brazil turned into a grisly nightmare that saw the brutal murders of two men. Referee Otavio da Silva got into an argument with player Josenir dos Santos Abreu over a call the ref made. 20-year-old da Silva ordered him off the pitch, but Abreu refused. Then da Silva pulled out a knife, fatally stabbing 30-year-old Abreu. Friends and family of the athlete were outraged and rushed the young referee. They butchered his limbs and hacked off his head, leaving it on a spike in the field. Abreu died on the way to the hospital. Police have arrested Luis Moraes Souza and are looking for two more suspects. The gruesome killings come just 11 months before Brazil is slated to host the World Cup. Revelations of vote buying threaten to lose Qatar the 2022 World Cup. Back in 2010, several strong contenders were bidding to host the 2022 FIFA World Cup. But Qatar came out of nowhere and scored the rights to host the tournament, surprising absolutely everybody. <laughs> Qatar had no soccer playing culture, no stadiums, and players would have to play in 50 degree heat or air conditioned stadiums. But one thing Qatar has lots of is money. 
Last week, the Sunday Times published an expose detailing payments by Qatari former FIFA executive Mohammed bin Hammam to secure votes for Qatar's World Cup bid. The revelations of corruption have given Australia, England, and the U.S. new hope of snatching the 2022 Games back from Qatar. But if FIFA really took the cheats out of soccer, would it still be the beautiful game? World Cup 2022. Qatar builds on the backs of slaves. In ancient times, the world's great monuments were built on the backs of slaves. But today may not be so different. Dozens of Nepali migrant workers have died in the past few weeks building infrastructure for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Survivors endure squalor, little food, and no pay, and are trapped without travel permits. In response to reports by The Guardian, FIFA VP Jim Boyce declared that an investigation must be made into these abuses. Let's hope investigators won't be blinded by the heat or the glory of the game. Do you think FIFA should be responsible for the deaths of the migrant workers? Leave your comments below. Glasgow Rangers. Bitters battle to rescue strike jurors. Glasgow Rangers are not dead yet. Administrators received four bids to rescue the crisis-hit club before a recent deadline. Rangers, like many, are suffering the effects of living beyond their means, wasting wads on dodgy foreign talent and years of financial mismanagement. Things have gotten so bad Rangers fans had to whip around to pay off the club's debts to other SPL clubs. Fans groups are worried that some of the mysterious bidders do not have the club's best interests at heart and may want to liquidate Rangers assets. Former director Paul Murray's Blue Knights are the fans' preferred bidders. Can they save the jurors from going under? Live poor to ban fans who say men up or playing like a girl. Live poor fans will never talk alone now that Live poor FC has become Live poor PC. Kachin. In an effort to eradicate verbal abuse by fans, Liverpool staff have been given a guide to an acceptable language, lamely slurs against race, sexual orientation, gender, and disabilities. Fans caught uttering those words can be banned. To be sure, racism and homophobia are problems in football. But in banning such terms as men up and playing like a girl, the race has gone too far. The policy seems like an effort to impose elite values on the masses. Scousers can't be scouts anymore, but at least these Germans are still fair game. Were you a bit retarded spastic transgender Jewish one lacked rent boyfriend? Feel welcome at Enfield now. Tell us what you think in the comments.